Okay, so today I'm actually going to begin with an announcement. So the announcement announcement is that TC STEM actually has started their tutoring sessions from Monday to like Thursday. So on Monday and Tuesday we do math from three to three thirty, and then on Wednesday to Thursday, from Wednesday to Thursday we do um, science from three to three thirty p.m. So if you guys have any questions, if you guys need any kind of homework help, please pop in and we will try to like help you guys. So talking about today's lesson we are gonna do rational expressions and we are gonna do subtraction but um the difference is again they're not gonna have the same denominator so we will work with rational expressions which have unlike denominators and we will work with subtraction first things first we are gonna do um so i have like three problems in here for you guys this is the do now and um, this is something that we did yesterday. So we worked with adding rational expressions that have unlike denominators or like different denominators. So I'm gonna give you guys about, I don't know, six to seven minutes to work on these three problems. And then we are gonna go over them. So this is, this should have been more like a practice because you already did this yesterday. But if you guys are stuck, confused, or have any questions, please let me know. Private chat in the chat box, so like you can private chat, public chat, and I will be helping you. Okay, just to kind of like refresh your minds, so if you are working with like um, rational fractions or like, I mean, rational expressions or fractions with unlike denominators, what you do is that you create a common denominator. The only way you can like work your way through is by creating a common denominator. So you ask yourself, how can I create a common denominator for the first problem? And once you do that, you can just, you know, if it's addition, you can add the top. And if it's subtraction, you can subtract the top. And then you simplify the fraction and bingo your answer. So for the first fraction, the way, um, if you haven't figured that out yet, the way you create the common um, denominator is by, you, you look at the, the denominator of the fractions, right? And you ask yourself, how do I make the common denominator? I see a minus four here, a plus three here, right? And then what should I do to the denominators of each of the fractions to make them look like, or to kind of like form a common denominator? Can you like multiply a minus four with three and then a plus four, a plus three with four, something like that? Okay, so if you do that, what is gonna happen if you do that? Let me actually show you what is gonna happen if you do that. So you are telling me to times it by three, right? So if I times, um, if I multiply that by three, it's gonna be three a minus 12, right? And if I multiply this by four, it's gonna be four a plus 12. Are they the same thing? because common denominator is that they are going to have the same denominator even though they're like two fractions they're going to have to be end up with like two same the same denominators oh. so are they the same thing no so you can't do that okay okay so i'm actually gonna i don't know i'm probably gonna show you the first one because you did not attend my class yesterday how dare you okay I literally forgot. It's okay. I was kidding. Um, all right. So Maggie, um, you want to work on the first question together? Yes. No. Maybe. Nod. Yeah. No. Chat. Okay. I'll take that as a no. 
are yes. And I mean, I'm gonna actually show you how to do the first problem, okay? <clears throat> So I have a fraction here, I have another fraction here, and they're being added together. So my first job is to create a common denominator. And how do I create a common denominator? Okay, so the way you create the common denominator is by multiplying this fraction using the denominator of the second fraction right so what is the denominator of the second fraction i can clearly see that the denominator is a plus three and whatever you do to the bottom you should do to the top because i mean if you don't do the same thing to the top you're just going to change the entire fraction here right because if i'm multiplying the top and the bottom by the same thing you you know i can literally like okay so i can literally cancel them out because like if i had the same thing on the top and the bottom they cancel out to be the one and i actually did not change the original fraction because i just timed it by one okay so that is why whatever you do to the bottom you should do that to the top already so if we did that then what should we multiply the, the numerator and the denominator of the second fraction by? A minus four. Mm -hmm. And guess what you just did? You created a common denominator because if you take oh, a look, okay, this denominator and this denominator, they have the same binomials, right? So now you have created this, the common denominator. And once you did that, <clears throat> you can combine them right because you have the same thing at the bottom i remember when we did um when we simplified rational expressions with the same denominator we brought down the denominators right it doesn't matter in what order you want to write the binomials in it, it can go any order and i'm just going to bring whatever i have at the top top so it was a plus two times a plus three and then I did plus whatever I have in here, right? A minus two times A minus four. Right, and when you have that, you have to simplify. And the way you simplify that is, okay, so the way you actually simplify the top in here is by doing FOIL, right? And how do you do that? Hold on. I'll try to use the space up here, okay? All right, so let's do FOIL. I multiply A and A, and I multiply A with three, right? And what do I get? A times A gives me A squared, plus three times A gives me three A, and then I do the same thing, two times A and two times three. Two times A gives me two A, two times three gives me six. And once I'm done with this first part, I should be doing the second part of foiling. You do the same thing, you foil a times a, a times negative four. A times a gives me plus a squared, a times negative four gives me negative four a, right? And I do the same thing with the negative two, negative two times a, negative two times negative four. Negative two times a gives me negative two a, and negative two times negative four gives me positive eight right and when i have done that i just write out my denominator notice how i'm not really doing anything to the denominator in terms of the fact that i'm not foiling that okay so when you do that you simplify your you simplify your fraction so i'm just gonna okay. and how do you simplify here you combine the like terms and what are the like terms that you have you have a do you have any other a's on uh, in this expression? Yes, you do. I see another a. A plus a, I mean a square. Okay, a square plus a square gives me two a square. And I have three a. Do you have any other um, coefficients, right, um, that have a variable of a? Two a. And what else? It's negative two a. Yes, I see that. Mm-hmm. And positive 2a. 
Okay, yep. So you have 3a, 2a, negative 4a, and then again 2a, right? I'm going to combine all of them. So what is 3 plus 2? 3 plus 2 is 5. What is 5 minus 4? 1. 1 minus negative 2 is negative 1, which is negative a, right? And when you do that, you look, what are, what are you left with now? You just left, you just, you are just left with um, just numbers, right? So then let's look for numbers. What do we have here? We have six. We have eight. And what is six plus eight? Fourteen. Mm -hmm. So then we have these two binomials at the bottom and then we have that at the top is there anything else that i should be doing to that um fraction don't we need to multiply a minus four and a plus three well that's what i was saying right i mean you can kind of like um foil them right so you can multiply this this and do the same thing when we did uh, while foiling but the problem is you are expected to leave these fractions uh, or like the answer in like simplified form. And how do you simplify fractions? You factor the top, you factor the bottom, you look for common factors and whatever common factors you have, you cancel, the, cancel them out, whatever you're left with, that's your um, final answer, right? So, I mean, in this problem actually, um, you don't have any common factors, but if you did, it would be like easily noticeable if you just leave them like that. So don't try to like, um, don't try to um, foil the bottom, just leave them like that. Oh, okay. Alrighty, so now that you know that, I'm gonna ask you to go back and practice. So I'm gonna tell you to practice the other two problems that we have in there. The second one, the third one. You're doing the same thing. You're simplifying the fractions. Okay. And I'm going to give you, I don't know, four to five minutes to practice these two problems, okay? And if you have any questions, if you are stuck, confused, not sure about anything, please, please, please ask me. I will help you or walk you through, okay?
Um, for the second one, that is correct, Amina. Good job. All right, Maggie, let's work. So, in this problem, right, we are working with again two fractions. Right, so one the first fraction, the second fraction, but in our denominator, we have like two um, binomials, and again, two binomials in a total of four binomials. Okay, so the first step should be you figuring out the um, like how you should create the common denominator. So, what should you multiply the first fraction with so that you get the common denominator? And what should you be multiplying the second fraction with so that you get the common denominator? So I take a look at the denominator of this fraction. So in order for me to actually create a common denominator, I have to make sure that both of the denominators of the two fractions have the exact same thing. So what should I multiply this denominator with so that this denominator and this denominator will be the same? What is missing in this denominator that is present in this denominator? What is the missing piece? X minus one, wait, did I? Oh yeah, okay, so you told me x plus one, but the problem is, the problem is you already have x plus one, so I'm asking you about the missing binomial. You already have x plus one. There is another binomial that is not in this fraction, but that is in here. What is that binomial? Like, you, you take a look at this, um, this denominator. The first binomial is x plus 1. Do you have that in here? Yes, I do. So check. You look at x plus... You, you take a look at x plus... You take a look at x plus 3, and you ask yourself, do I have x plus 3 in here? Do you? No, right? You only have x minus 2 and x plus 1. So x plus 3 is the missing binomial that is not in this, um, that is not in this, in the denominator of this fraction, okay? So I should be multiplying, I should be multiplying this fraction by the missing binomial, which was, in other words, x plus 3. Right? And if you multiply the bottom by that, you have to multiply the top by that. Right? And now you come to the second fraction and you ask yourself, what is the missing, what is the missing um, binomial in the denominator? So in order for you to find the missing one, you have to take a look at this fraction, um, this denominator right here. What is the missing binomial that you have in here, but not in here? So you take a look and you ask yourself, do I have x minus two in here? Nope, I don't, so this should go in here. Do I have x plus one in here? Check, I do, x, I do have x plus one. So you don't have to multiply the second fraction using x plus one, you just multiply it using x minus two. And if you multiply the denominator you, with that, you have to multiply the top with that as well, right? So when you do that, look what you have, look what you have created. You have created the common denominator. You have x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 3. You have x plus 1, x minus 2, x plus 3. You have the same thing in the denominators of the two fractions, right? And once you do that, you should be able to bring down the denominator. It doesn't matter which order you write them in. And then you just bring down the top. 
So two times x plus three, it's a plus, so I'm gonna put the plus sign, and three times this. So three times x minus two. Once you do that, you have to simplify. And how do you simplify? You distribute the two, distribute the two. So two times x is two x, two times three is six. And now you multiply the distribute the three, distribute the three. So three times x is plus three x, three times negative two is negative six. And now you write the denominator. And when you do that, you have to combine the like terms because you are not done simplifying as long as you have come as long as you have like terms sitting in your expression. So what are the like terms in here? 2x, do you see any other coefficients with x? Yep, 3x. So 2x plus 3x is 5x and then 6 minus 6 they cancel out so just 5x at the top and at the bottom it's going to be the entire denominator did that make sense maggie it's kind of confusing i think after more practice i'll get it Okay, so is there any way I can make it more clear for you in this particular problem, or do you just want to go back and try another problem on your own? Should I explain this problem one more time, or should I explain it like, I don't know, a couple of more times so that you understand it, or do you want to go back and try the problem on your own, try another problem on your own? Okay, gotcha. So you wanna try, which sounds good to me. So go back here, try the last problem. Um, Okay, so the third problem is like probably the hardest one among the three problems. I and feel the, a little biased. There is like a lot of thing going on in there. Okay, there is actually not that many things going on in here, but I agree. I'll give you that. 
So look, look at the denominators. Just by looking at it, can you like tell off the top of my, off the top of your head that what you should be multiplying the fractions with to make a common denominator? I can't like, I can't really tell just by looking at it right in this way it's given. So I have to do something to the fractions so that it looks more pleasant. Like it looks more like I would say um, approaching. Because now it just looks like this thing right here. This scary thing right here. So what you should be doing is factoring. Factor the first fraction. I mean, not like the entire fraction, but like factor the denominator of the first fraction. Factor the denominator of the second fraction. And then you should be able to pick the, the binomial or like the term that you should be multiplying the denominator suite to get the common denominator. So factor, the first thing that you should be doing is factoring. Factor both the fractions, the denominators of both the fractions. And then you should be, be able to identify that what the common um, denominator should be, okay? You guys want to work on it together or individually on your own for a couple of minutes? What do you guys want to do? Let's do it together. Okay. Sure. Together is better. <laughs> Oof. So this is the problem. And like I just said to you guys, ooh, the background is so bright. Okay, so let's factor the denominator. How do you factor this? Please don't disappoint me. How do you factor that? So you take three x yes. and then x minus two. Okay, yeah, yeah, you just explained it. Yeah, so the method that Amina just told me is GCF. Yes, thank you. So you do GCF factoring for this one, right? So what is the GCF like? I mean, I just told me the GCF is 3x. And how did I figure out the GCF for the 10,000 times? It's, I look at the numbers first, right? So what is the GCF of three and then negative six? It's three, three is the um, greatest common factor. And then when, when you have like two variables with um, two variables, and then you are dealing with exponents, you should always pick the variable with the lowest exponent, which in this case is just x, right? So once I do that, I have to divide each of the terms using the, um, the GCF. So 3x squared divided by the GCF, which is 3x, is just 3, 3 cancel out. We have two x's at the top, one x at the bottom. They cancel out and you're just left with x. Minus, and then if you divide negative 6x by the GCF, which is 3x, x's cancel out. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2, so which is what I'm going to write here. Once you do that, you have to factor the, set, the denominator of the second fraction as well. And how do you factor that? What kind of polynomial is that? I can, I can literally hear you guys yelling in my ears that it's a trinomial factoring. Because there are um, three terms, which makes it a trinomial. And then the only way you can factor a trinomial is by using trinomial factoring. And how do you factor a trinomial? It's OK if you guys disappoint me this time, because it's just OK. There's a right, so thing you... in my head right now, and I'm, like, not sure. <laughs> it's totally fine, because I'll be telling you guys how to do it, and then you'll remember. You know? So, how do we factor our trinomial? I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, if I give you guys, like, the first step or something, you guys will be able to figure that out. So, I'm going to give you the first step. Oh, no. So what are the two numbers that if you add, you should get negative four, and if you multiply the same two numbers, you should get positive four. So the first, the, I, 
I'll say the way I kind of go with this thing is that I try to find the kind of like the factors of four, right? So, or, or the multiples of four. So what are the multiples of four? Well, the multiples of four is like one times four. Can you do anything to one and four such that they will add to negative four? Like, you know, you can negate both of them. You can make one negative, one positive. One negative. So you make negative one and then you put positive. So negative one plus four, that will never give you negative four. That will give you three. Okay, now... Now let me um let me ask you another question. When do you get a positive product? By product I mean when what do things you should multiply to get a positive negative. number? You can multiply a negative and a negative and you can multiply a positive and a positive, right? Mm -hmm. So now you know that you cannot have a positive and like you cannot have a positive and a negative. Like you just told me like negative one and a positive four, you can't have that. You're going to have either two positive numbers or two negative numbers, right? So let's go. So the first um, multiple, right? The first uh, pair of multiples, that did not work. So then what are the other ones? So one times four gives me four. Two times two gives me four. Can I do anything to the two and the other two such that they will add to negative four? I remember, okay, so... Okay, let me make your life easier. Can you do two plus two? Will that give you negative four? No. No, right, thank you, no. Will negative two, wait, I should have changed this thing. Hold on. Will negative two plus negative two, or in other words, like negative two yeah, minus two, yeah, yeah. will that, yup, that will give you um negative four, right? And then does negative two times negative two, does that give you negative, I mean, positive four as your product? Negative yeah. two? Yeah. Thank you. So those are the two magic numbers, right? Negative two, negative two, negative two, negative four, two. Check, check. So my two bubbles, We'll have negative two, negative two. You can kind of like, um, so this is like the expanded form. So you can like um, combine them by like making a negative X minus two to the second power. But let's not do that. It's going to be easier if we keep that in the expanded form. Oh, now does the, do the denominators look better? They look much better to me. And when you do that, you can easily identify how you should be uh, forming the um, common denominator. And the top, I mean, I'm just gonna make it X square. I can make it like X times X, but that's just gonna increase my workload. So I'm not gonna do that. So now you ask yourself, this is like the same thing that, this is the same thing as the second problem that we did. So now you look at this piece and you say, what you should multiply this one with and what you should multiply the denominator of this one with so that they will have a common denominator. Okay, so, so and then, hmm? Three X. So what should you be multiplying the top and the bottom of the first fraction with? Nothing, one. Okay, so if you take a look at this denominator and this denominator, how many x minus twos do this um, does this um, denominator have? Two. And how many does this one have? One. Then what is the missing piece? So that this one will also have two x minus twos. Oh, okay, it has to be two. Okay. Okay, so then what should I multiply this one by? X this one. Two. Mm -hmm. And whatever I multiply the denominator with, I have to multiply the numerator with the same thing. And when I do that, this one, this one, this fraction is done. And now if you take a look at this one, what should you be multiplying with this one with? 3x. Yep, because 
this um, fraction um, already has that x minus 2, and then it has that 2 times. So you don't have to worry about that. But 3x is like the only term that this fraction does not have. So I'm going to multiply it with 3x, the top with 3x. Now, if you take a look at the bottom or the denominators, what do you see? Do you see what I see? They're the same. Yep. So you just created what? The common denominator. Yay. So I'm just going to bring down the denominator. And whatever I have at the top, I'm just going to multiply them. So 7 times x minus 2 plus this right here, x squared times 3x. And then what do you do next? You combine, or not combine, but then you have to um, distribute. So 7 times x gives me 7x. 7 times negative 2 gives me negative 14. Plus 3 times 3x times x squared actually gives you what? 3 times what? x cubed. Mm -hmm. Because if you are multiplying um, two variables that have the same base, you keep the base and you add the exponents. So then you write down your denominator. And this thing cannot be simplified anymore. So this is your answer. Does this make sense? I understand. Maggie, how about you? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if it's a yes, what we're gonna do is that I plan to do, I plan to actually kind of um, finish the whole factoring thingy. So just bear with me a couple of more minutes, okay? So we are going to do like subtracting rational expression now. So subtracting rational expression is the exact same thing as adding subtract um, rational expression. You do the exact same step, except instead of adding the top, you have to subtract the top. And um, I'm not going to do like, I'm not going to walk you guys. I'm not gonna walk you, I'm not gonna like um, actually do every single step, right? Because that's like insane. It's the same thing, you create the common denominator. So you multiply the first fraction, the top and the bottom using the denominator of the second fraction and you do vice versa. And then you have created the common denominator and when they have the common denominator, this is actually the step that I wanted to talk about here. So then you bring down the first um, numerator here, right? And in the second one, you have a subtraction sign. So you keep the subtraction sign right there. And then you bring down this thing that, down there. So, so far, so good. Nothing changed. It's the same thing as you would do for um, adding rational expressions. But then when you distribute, right? So this is actually the only place where, it, uh, where subtraction differs from addition it's like when you distribute you're actually multiplying with a negative number and what happens if you multiply something with a negative number well the sign just changes right and so negative 2 times x is negative 2x negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 that's exactly what you have in here and then once you have that you are supposed to combine the like terms so 3 minus 2 gives you 1 which is x so 3x minus 2x is just x plus three plus four is just plus seven and you keep the denominator bingo that's your answer so the only thing to be kind of like cautious about when you are doing um when you're subtracting rational expression is the fact that you will have to distribute the negative sign so whatever you have in the parentheses after the negative sign the signs are going to change thumbs up yeah we understood understand mm -hmm. And it's going to get only much better when we do a practice problem. Oh, before we go to a practice problem. So, um, like you are seeing the big eyeballs in here. So they're actually watching the video. So you guys should be watching this video too. If you guys are confused, if you need some clarification, if you need some more help, extra resources, this video will be up in, um, in Google Classroom. So please, 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 it's highly recommended. If you take a look at this, or if you watch this video in your own time. No, please don't. Leave. 
Okay, so this is your first practice problem. The denominator is not that crazy, so please try this problem and private message me the answer. If you are stuck, we can work on it together if that's what you guys want. But I'm gonna give you guys two minutes to do this problem and to send me the answer. Please, please, please let me know if you are stuck, if you are confused. The only way that I can, I will be able to help you is if you ask me a question or if you like tell me, hey, Tamana, I don't understand this. Can you please like, you know, help me or walk me through? I will do that. But please let me know if you are stuck or if you need help. Also, when I'm like talking, like, you know, nonstop and doing a, a problem or like solving one, if you are confused in any of the steps that I did, just stop me in that place, like stop me in the spot and ask me, hey, Tamana, what did you just do? I don't understand. Can you explain? I'll explain as many times as you need me to explain for you to understand. So the first step that you should essentially be doing is creating a common denominator. And once you do that, you just bring down the numerator and they're being subtracted. And this problem is actually a very like, I don't know, I would say easy one because for the top, you don't really have a crazy binomial to work with. So it should be relatively easier. Try it one more time, Amina. Okay, so let's do it. So the following problem tells us to, it is telling that five over X is being subtracted from this thing right here. Okay, let's then do that. Let's create the common um, denominator first. And how do we do that? Okay, so I multiplied this one by x and I multiplied this one by x minus 1, right? To create the common denominator, now you guys can see that they both have the same denominators. And what I would do to the bottom, I should be doing the same thing to the top. So do that. And now that they have the same denominator, I can just bring that down and... I combine this two, so two times x is two x minus five times whatever that binomial is. I mean, not five, but negative five. Okay, so when you do that, what happens? Now you have to simplify. And how do you simplify? Well, you distribute five times negative five times x is negative five x. Negative five times negative one is just positive five. Thank you. Once you do that, you have to combine the like terms. How do you combine like terms? Well, I have two x and I have a negative five x and I can combine them. They're just placed right beside each other. So they're like begging us to combine them. Yep. 
negative 3x plus 5 x minus 1 times x. Yes? Did we understand? Are we confused? Don't we? Or do, can we do like x squared minus 1? We don't need to so, like to wait. So for this one, so okay, so here's the thing. So if you do, if you want to um, distribute the x, right, so that's going to be x squared minus x minus 3x. 1, right? Wait. Wait, 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 say what? Yeah, so if you distribute the x, right, um, I'll get back to you, Maggie, just give me one second. So if you distribute the x, so x times x give me, gives, gives me x squared, x times negative 1 gives me negative x, right? Yes, Amina? Yeah. Yeah. So if you do that, I mean, there's nothing much that you can do to this fraction. I mean, you can't, like, um, you can't, uh, what is it called? You can't cancel out common denominators because it does not have any common denominators. And on top of that, you're asked to simplify. This fraction can be simplified. You know how? The, the bottom is, like, factorable. You can factor the bottom, which is what we have in here. So whenever you are asked to simplify, always leave your answer in the factored form. Which oh. is why I did not distribute the x, because if you do that, you will have to circle back and then, you know, factor that. So why do extra work? I mean, it's just like <laughs> weird, right? Yeah. All right, can we please do another practice problem? Yeah, sure. Here's the, pra here's the other practice problem. And I'm going to give you guys four that minutes. That would be a lot of work, looks like. It's not a lot of work. Look at the denominators. You have something in common already. You don't have to like factor them like we did for that addition problem. And to answer your question, Maggie, um, welcome back, Maggie. You just left for two seconds, I think. Ooh, um, try it one more time, maybe. You guys want to go over that together? Or you guys want to have some time on your own to figure that out? Yeah. Hmm? Let's do it together. I'm like pretty confused. Where did I get yeah, it? Yeah, sure. And I also apologize if you guys are confused. Oh. All right. So we have two fractions like we have been having. And we are asked um, to subtract 
So simplify using subtraction. So now the first thing like we have been doing is we have to figure out how do we form the common denominator, right? So what should you be multiplying the top and the bottom of the first fraction with so that this denominator has the exact same plus thing? Two. Six plus two, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not the exact same thing. I said it wrong. But then, um, yeah, I mean, in, in the mind, this denominator. <laughs> denominator. <laughs> oh, my God. It's totally okay, denominator. So x. So now you have x minus. Do you have x minus one question mark? Yes, I do. Do you have x plus 2? Yes, I do. Right? So now it's okay. It's balanced. I have the exact same thing that this thing has, right? Or probably one extra um, number, but that's okay. So whatever you to multiply the, the bottom by, you should multiply the top by the same thing. So now you look at this part and you ask yourself, what should I be multiplying this part by so that it has whatever this part has? <laughs> So you multiply, you, do you ask yourself, do you have question mark? Do you have X minus one? Check. Do you have <laughs> two? No, I don't. So you multiply this by two, the, top, the bottom by two, and you multiply the top by two, right? So now, if you take a look at that denominator, what did you just do? You created the common denominator, and how did you do that? You created... Okay, so you created two fractions with the same exact denominator. And when you do that, it becomes fancy. Right, so now I'm just going to multiply whatever I have in the top. 3x times x plus 2. Minus 4 times 2. Right? So when you do that, you have to simplify. And how do you simplify? Well, you distribute 3x. Right, so 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is plus 6x. 3x times x, oh, no, nope. what am I saying? I apologize. So now you're done with that. Um, I was thinking of that as a binomial. Okay, now you're done with it. Now let's go to the second part. What is negative 4 minus, I mean, negative 4 times 2, it's negative 8. When you're multiplying a positive and a negative number, the product is a negative um, number. Wait, isn't that, that looks like the same answer? That you sent me? Yeah. Oh my God, that does. But then what I did was like, I did not see that exponent because of the way it's written. I apologize. You actually had it correct. Okay. Um, so this is actually your answer, the final answer. Oops. Yep, so this is your answer. Any points of confusion, any requirement of clarification, anything, anything, anything. Are you guys good? Yeah, Thank I understand you. that. Okay, good job. I'm good too. All right, so if you guys are good, so am I. Um, so that is actually the end of today's lesson. I'm gonna put up the worksheet as usual. If you guys wanna try it, please try it. And in the next class when we have, when we meet again, ask me any questions if you want to go over anything or you know if there was like anything that you were having problems with we can do that so the worksheets are not mandatory but it's a good source of practice right because i mean it's it's like i can't like give you everything right now and then i wish i could like i mean i wish we could do like 10 hours of practice together but that is just not possible so yeah, you guys will have to like, you know, do stuff on your own. 
Um, and then I'm always here, like I have always been saying that if you guys have any questions or any um, problems, email me anytime and I will respond to you. And like I mentioned earlier, we have the um, tutoring session. So come to the tutoring session if you have any questions and we will be helping you guys.